part of it not. We have a beta version of a Linux client that's working beautifully here. Shout out to Chris Woods for that. God bless you. This hand is nuts. And by that, I mean it needs like one more momentum, Dorco, but we've got like Righteous Wax Shot in the place. So let's go. One thing that we want to keep track of is that there's only six wild shards in our deck. So there's two in our hand already this game. So this pomegranate only has two more things to, or four more things to get. We have a non-resource to the top of my deck here. I mean, is it? Looks like just a kind of clunky version of the other deck so far. We'll see if Glory's good. Opponent is playing Balthazar here, which is a five charge champion that if the top card of their deck is a resource, it gets played for free, or they draw it and they gain two health. Maybe a Blood Wild control deck? Oh, you definitely see this champion power being okay in a control deck. Another Eldurthan's Glory. All right, so I'm gonna play this. Am I just playing Pomegranate this turn? Yeah, I think I am. Attack with my 5-5. Five five. So momentum is a mechanic that builds up here. So every time I play a resource, the momentum number on my Righteous Wax Shot goes up by one. If I ever miss a resource drop for any reason, I'm not going to be able to, this will just turn back into its base zero one stats. But every time I play a resource, if I play a resource every turn or multiple resources like I did last turn, this card is just gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. The momentum mechanic lives up to its name and snowballs very nicely. I mean, that's the joke, right? So like you'll see here, when we come back to my turn here, this is gonna turn into a zero one. And then, huh. I wanna ult Earthen's Glory this turn. I think I just wanna build momentum here. I'm gonna play this. You also get more value out of this glory potentially. I'm not going to hit my champion power just yet. My champion power gives one of my troops an extra momentum and lets me play an extra resource. So I kind of want to activate this when I have multiple momentum troops in play. Wow, the jump block is really good for us there. The Leprechaun Artist, in addition to having Steadfast and building momentum, whenever it attacks, it creates a Lucky Coin. So he's kind of self-enabling. Lucky Coin's a resource that lets us uh, Fate Weave. All right, so my opponent's played Massacre, which gives all troops minus three, minus three permanently, which means when my momentum bonus leaves the start of my next turn, this Wax Shot's gonna die. So we got kind of punished for not playing the Old Earthen's Glory last turn. Don't, I don't think I wanna play this out. I think my opponent probably has more troops that this will get rid of. So I'm gonna wait. When Old Earthen's Glory comes into play, it voids every troop with three defense or less. Uh, steadfast means attacking doesn't cause it to exhaust, so you can attack and then block the following turn. Pick up Jeffrey. Hey. There, now I'm unmuted. Glory lines up really well against Vampire Queen. Jacob, stop trying to take his toys. It's okay, there are plenty of toys down here.
In in terms of competitive constructed uh Dwight, yeah, they're pretty much they're pretty much unplayable. One of the sweet things too, if you're ever watching my stream and you see one of my opponent's decks that looks sweet, as soon as I finish a match against them, you could go to hexpvbtools.net and click on history and look and find my opponent's deck list. So, um, a lot of players don't play Hex through Steam. So like right now I'm playing on a beta client that's that they're testing, they're letting me test for Linux. There are the regular client has a bunch of things that don't that people that don't play as well. Steam charts only show the people that play hex through Steam. Alright, another vampire queen. And this does get rid of my righteous whack shot, which kinda sucks, but it is what it is. Also, if you're worried about, if you want to see like how many people actually play things, again, Hex gives us all the data. So you can literally see every match of Hex that's ever played in the competitive set. State of the game, October. Oh yeah, it doesn't count the PS4 players either. We just released on the PS4. I forgot about that. It doesn't count the PS4. State of the game. All right. There you go. That one right there talks about all the stuff. Lots of lots of data. Uh, yep, to create banishing. I guess I'll get rid of the seeker. Putting a seeker under to create banishing is scary, but I really don't want to get beat down by this because, like, if my opponent plays another seeker, they can void this decree and get that seeker back. I'm holding these resources in case we draw another. I'm a liar. All my exalted pathfinders are dead. I'm holding these for momentum troops. That's... yep. Okay, so wildlife costs X and creates X random wild troops with cost X. So they made six, six cost wild troops. Oh my god! Monk of the Sacred Stones gets the gets the wildlife back to their hand. That's that's hilarious. <laughs> God, we are so we need to like draw running seekers, right? That is that is not an eternal seeker. All right, all right, ding, ding dong, we are dead. Uh, All right, I think I board out Wax Shot against the deck that has um, Massacre in it. I'm gonna board in the Merry Caravan. This deck doesn't actually have that many troops in it. It's only like 20 to 24 troops. So like, in addition to not having a ton, we have 10 shards that don't make Wild Threshold. So I don't think Might Singer is very good. I wonder if this is a Gargolith matchup. They don't have a ton of spot removal, it doesn't feel like. I think I'm just gonna submit like this. I'm just gonna swap the Wax Shots for the Merry Caravans and try it out. Yeah, maybe Marty. The question is like, is it feels like Might Singers not a powerful enough payoff for Pomegranate? Like, with how hard these momentum troops snowball and like push through damage, it feels like I just have better things I can be doing with Pomegranate than like maybe drawing a card and eventually getting a 7 7. Like, why, why would I want to maybe draw a card when I could guaranteed draw a card and like just like get my power to kill you right away? So it's, it's not that like, in the context of the format, I think Might Singer might be bad compared to like what the momentum decks are able to do. This hand is great. It gets to go Leprechaun Artist on two into Shamrock Goldfather on three.
Yeah, we do. We do generate a lot of coins on average. You're very lucky. That's why we've got leprechauns in our deck. So we're probably gonna be able to play this deck and then one more today. Do we want to brew? I kind of want to brew with Timothy after this. Timothy is a card that I would like to work on. Timothy and Pippin Hustler. Pippin Hustler's like my jam. He's my favorite. I want to just get the gold father down here and build momentum attack with this first yeah this is a free attack into a free decision they might not block because i can have a combat trick a cheap shot or something nah, not cheap shot but look they chose not to block god bless so again just by like sequencing my gold father post combat i got in two free points of damage there so the gold father says Whenever my opponent plays a non-resource, I get a lucky coin. And I can also discard three lucky coins to play the top card of my deck for free. All right, the gold father is no more. He's dead, Jim. Drawing a wild shard really kind of sucks. I need, um, I need a second diamond for this Aldurthan's glory. Put a resource on top of my deck so I can hopefully find that. I'm gonna go ahead and attack with this. I'm gonna wait on my champion power because there's a non-zero chance we get massacred next turn. I don't want to hit my champion power. Uh, uh, wait till this afternoon. Kitchen Finks, and I will update and post the the candles deck. It's pretty cheap, and I can budget it a little bit to probably get it under twenty bucks. If we hit a diamond here, we we actually get to kill our opponent, I believe. What a tilt! So if I hit a diamond, I would have been able to give this momentum three, and then play a shard. Champ power, play a shard. These would have both been eight and then glory would have wiped their board. <laughs> and now I have to fate weave another resource to the top of my deck to try and hit the diamond for this. Y'all, y'all kept upselling me on this mid range build, but I'm not impressed so far. Hog, Hogland is not amused, okay? All right, no blocks should mean no massacre. It's a shame the Goldfather didn't live. We have all these lucky coins to be able to play stuff off the top of our deck. All right, uh, sure. All right. And now like the glory is late. I think I'm holding this for post vampire queen. I'm gonna play this seeker to answer their seeker. When you're playing an eternal seeker mirror, having the second eternal seeker is ideal. Oh no! Opponent has the Mary Caravan technology as well. So, Mary Caravan, this is a card we boarded in as well. Whenever you play a resource, you add a party counter to this, and then you summon a random troop with cost equal to the number of party counters on it. All right, um, I should have played a lucky coin last turn, right? To scry, to fit, we have a non-resource at the top. At any rate, let's do that now. And then play this Seeker, which is going to void my opponent's Seeker. So choose seven. It only gets rid of other seven cost things, so Seeker will never void itself. 
Yeah, there's four four copies of Pomegranate in the deck. Oh geez, Palm is really good with Mary Caravan. Hopefully, the first three troops we generate here, we're gonna need to play Glory and just clean them all up. Yeah, I agree. We have, like I said, we have four Mary Caravans in our board. We actually boarded them in in this matchup because they're good. They're good matchups like this, I think. Uh, Fox Killer, Chris Woods got hex working. I am playing on a beta version of a native Linux client, and by that I mean Chris threw threw all of the switches in Unity to Linux for me, and then said we're going to see what this spits out, and if it works, that's awesome. And then it spit out something, and it worked. So o almost have my opponent dead here. We're putting them to one. Glory's going to clean up a bunch of their duders here. So Palm of Granite would have actually been lethal there, right? It would have uh, played another resource to trigger this. <laughs> Waltz of the Damned. Yeah, that's pretty good because this card has a death cry. When it dies, they draw cards and gain health. It's pretty good. Matriarch of the Flames, yeah. Right. Where's my Mary Caravan at? So the coin, the coin is a resource, but it doesn't make a charge. The coin doesn't make a charge. It is, it is a resource and it gives you a resource that it fate weaves, but it doesn't give you a charge towards your champion power. So it's not like a normal wild shard or like a standard shard that gives you a charge. So it gives you some upside a standard shard doesn't have and gives you something doesn't give you some things a standard shard does. Uh, I didn't play a shard that turn because I have no incentive to. I could use it to fate weave, but I think I'd rather hold these for building momentum or like if I hit a Mary Caravan or an Exalted Pathfinder. Now that I have four, I'm not going to hold four, but I think holding holding three is fine, especially when I'm close to my champion power. Like these resources potentially makes my make my threats larger. They potentially make troops with a Mary Caravan if I draw one. They potentially draw cards with an Exalted Pathfinder. There are a lot of things these resources can do. That being said, I think we're just about to get dumpstered. Yep. All right. Opponent's deck is sweet. Super dead. We tried both. Both teams tried their hardest. Uh, the configuration that I played in the bash had four four pure flame protectors in an apprentice of Bolas, and I wasn't particularly impressed with it. Palm of Granite gives you more push than pure flame does in my experience. Give this another couple tries here. He's a turtle and turtles are great. He's a he's a shifty a shifty like blackjack dealing turtle, right? He's part of the Merry Caravan. They're all like degenerate gamblers. I feel like the Merry Caravan had to have been modeled off of TCG players, just like this roaming this roaming group of degenerate gamblers. Turtly enough for the turtle club.
Alright, yeah, I see playing a control deck. Um Sand's pretty terrible, right? No diamond. Sand's speculative, but I'm gonna keep it. We get to fate weave a resource. If we hit a diamond, we can play the leprechaun artist. Guys! Yeah, Timothy's gonna. God, what a what a tilt! Just a T I L T T. This is this is why I have slow duels in my in my little build, by the way, because hitting your hitting your threshold is important. Uh, these these. We tried, chat. We gave it, we gave it the old college best. All right, when I miss this turn, I'm going to concede. I hate you, I hate this game, but this is my longest relationship, so I feel the need to share Matt with the 9 month 3 subscription. <laughs> Welcome back, Maddie. Thanks for the support. All right, Merry Caravans in. Gargoliths in. What are we cutting? What's the trim here? Bob, are you in chat? What are you cutting in this matchup? Do I trim just one of each of these against a hero fall deck? That doesn't seem unreasonable. Try this. Goldfather is unique. He's also very good. Very, very good. I don't think you ever trim the Goldfather. If you try in fact, if you try to trim the Goldfather, he will find you in your sleep. Don't don't trim the Goldfather. You won't like the results. No, stop it, madman. Get out of here. What card do I always want to play in the third turn of the game? Did you say Goldfather? You'd be correct. I want to, I want four of them in my deck. No, stop it. Nope. Nope. Just uh, never, never knock Goldfather on the third turn of the game. And our opponents have been having like mono disconnect issues this morning. Linux client kills connections clearly, right? RIP. I wonder if there's a connection issue with the updated client. Yeah, Hex, Hex box up a message letting you know that your opponent is connected. It's strange. Should we ask Hex if they could make it so we could like sponsor for better cash would be neat if you could do it more regularly, it's better for the game's exposure. I, you know, it's, 
I am I am a simple man who takes money to do things. That's definitely that's definitely true. Daddy. Money squawks talks. Mo is, is it money squawks? No, Declan squawks. Declan is the one that squawks. Uh, money talks. Declan squawks. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, see, look at that. Don't board out your gold fathers. He'll come for you. He'll come for you in your sleep. The gold father is coming for you in your sleep. Oh, baby. Every time my leprechaun artist makes a coin, it's just like fist pump. I'm insured. Get my momentum building. So. Why would you ever board out a leopard? Look, they. <laughs> I didn't. They wanted to board out. Le they wanted to board out the gold father, and I put them in their place, Matthew. It's like, no, you don't board out the gold father. Even if they hero fall the gold father here, he made a coin. It's fine. It was wonderful. It was good for me. I hope it was good for all of you too. Yeah, look at that. Oh, we're killing that one. Cute. Cute. Start with this, see what we get. So I'm gonna do this. Let's just, let's just smack him with the gold father here. Just do this. And then do this. See what the most expensive card is and don't port it out. <laughs> And now, even if opponent has more removal for this, we're set up to just like be able to play all of our bombs off the top at this point. Hey, look at that. Ultimate Pathfinder. That's a little scary. If they choose to hero fall Neo, we're going to lose another Neo out of our hand. That's pretty good. So this prevents all damage other than they would deal this turn, so they got a fog. Um, do I want to decree banishing that? Probably not. Yeah, probably not. I think this card's very good. We had two of these in the diamond sapphire control deck we played earlier. If Neo doesn't fall, we're gonna have a real good time next turn. I'm not gonna attack with Neo because my opponent could have another Huntmaster. Oh, well, I guess if they had another Huntmaster, they would just, uh... Yeah, that was wrong. I should have attacked with both. They have another Huntmaster to prevent the damage that this one deals. Yeah, that was, that was bad. I was, I was, I was misthinking about how that card worked. Uh, they're uploaded now, actually. Which decks are these? This is... BS, Control, Standard... 22nd, 2017. From the ashes, yep. That's, it's unfortunate, so they kill all the troops and they get one back into their control. They took the gold father. Okay, yeah, I guess that just kills us, right? That out of there. Fate weave here. So Mary Caravan punching the clock and going to work for us. Next turn we'll be able to play a diamond ice, hit my champ power, play another resource. Trigger the caravan twice. Dark heart of Nolzan, sure. The uh what's it called? Caravan's pretty good against Dark Heart, right? New set's going well. Hex wasn't Hex wasn't working under wine, so I just couldn't play. Just flat out couldn't play. 
Chris Woods went the extra mile though. God bless him, very grateful. And uh, I am playing under a beta version of a native Linux client for, for Hex. Play this out, trigger the Merry Caravan. Um, let's hit my champ power here. My troops don't revert. That's a good one to get. Play this out. We have a non-resource at the top of my deck. Uh, let's activate this and discard these three and play the top card of my deck for free. Pomegranate. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Trigger momentum again. Hmm. That have speed? That, are they dead? Are you dead, opponent? Have you been slain by the Merry Caravan and Shamrock the Gold Father? Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Got him. God, the Merry Caravan is great. This card, this card's wonderful. Let's talk about things that are wonderful. That, that was a real good time. Rip roaring good time. Yes, get, get him. Rawr. What is revert? So revert means change a card back to its base state. So basically wipe off any permanent modifiers that are on it. So like if you revert a card that has bonuses from momentum, it's going to lose all the bonus power that it got from momentum. Board out the gold father, they said. You won't want to draw the fourth one. They said, give me all of the gold fathers, chat. Do not... Do not disrespect the gold father. He will find you where you sleep. He will find you where you sleep. Do you have a bowl down here? Can you grab your bowl? The gold father will find you. He will hunt, hunt you down. Vanilla 2727 starts. What a terrible, what a terrible problem to have. Have too many vanilla 27 27s. Just, just rough. You can have a daybreak. What does that card do? Draw a card, lose a health verdict. That card seems mediocre. Most of the cards in my hand suck, so, yep, random. Tilt. Tilt. I have five cards, I don't care if you discard, hit one of the two that I do. We need another, we need another wild for this. I mean, magic has random discards too. Phantom. See if they kill. They might kill the Exalted Pathfinder in response here. Yep. That way I can't, uh... I can't play this out before. Draw my card. Alright, here move opponent. Look, someone said they wanted Mike Singer in this deck. Do we see why we don't want Mike Singer in this deck? Opponent just doesn't even get a sh give a shit about the Mike Singer. It's like Strangle the Leprechaun. I'm gonna attack with both of these. And then I'll Dirthen's Glory. I 
They strangle the leprechaun a euphemism. So the reason why I did this post combat or I played the resource post combat is because I wanted to keep the three drop that the Mary Caravan made. Make my guy smaller. Make my guy smaller. Deal. You killed my free guy. You got me. Hero didn't fall, that's a good step. I'm getting from the ashes. Yep, that's fine. I'll take the gold father. I'll decree my gold father. Play my next gold father. Who, does anyone still want to board out a gold father? Is that is that a is that a discussion we're still having here? God. Oh no! There was an eternal seeker in my bin that I discarded randomly, so I forgot about it. Oh no! My Mary Caravan! Oh no! Oh good. Whew! Whew. It's fine. We got it. We got to build it back up here. But this is a caravan of my people. This is this is the caravan of my people. It will it will carry. God, could you imagine if we had two caravans going right now? It's like two two drunken satyr leprechaun parties. We need more. We need more drunken satyr leprechaun parties in our lives. All right, where's my eternal seeker at? Pomegranate's okay. Boop. Boop. Poppy pup. Once per turn, when other cards you control transforms, this gets plus two two and set best. Um, I'm gonna hit this. I think it's just in the wrong order, right? Put another non resource atop my deck. We're looking for a seeker at this point. I could have I could have hit them for two more points of damage here. Oh, yeah, I'm just gonna decree a banishing. This is like kinda scary. If they have a seeker of their own, we could be in trouble with this line, but I think I just need to keep the board clear. They have nothing? That would be so good for us. It could be anything. That's that's a pretty good one. I think I'm just gonna hold that for now. They they probably need a from the ashes to kill. No! My poor troops! My poor troops! Oh no! So sunlit sentence destroys every attacking troop and then lets my opponent verdict twice. Pretty good. Pretty good opponent. Oh, God. It, I'm, I'm going to get blown out by that card a lot before I remember to play around it. Your wreckage has been settled. Yep. It's going to be a From the Ashes. Pomegranate would actually be a pretty good draw, right? We get a four and a five drop. Survey says five drop. Ooh, ooh, dragon, my dragon. Man, the Merry Caravan is like the best party, the best party on Enrath. Oh no, conceding to a removal spell. Oh wait, they're gonna get my thing. God. God. God bless you, Alderthan's glory. Just, just what the doctor ordered. Let's go, live amph. Let's go. You need more? Jake, do you want more? Yep. Okay. Mm 
I think if you enjoy playing constructed, the most bang for your buck, if you know Hex is something you're going to enjoy, the most bang for your buck is buying a cheap constructed deck and then just playing a bunch on the free ladder and earn your prizes there and the other free tournaments that Hex offers. Like, you're gonna, you're gonna get a reasonable amount of bang for your buck. Yeah, there, there's a single player PV. If you're not 100% sure, Hex is gonna be something that you're going to like. I always encourage people to play, play the PVE first. 7-4, Deathcry Verdict. All right. Um, yeah, I'm going to attack with this. I think if they want to trade their Bride for it, that's fine. Oh, God. I just... I just... Uh, uh, God. Uh, God. I'm just letting them do things. So I'm done. We're done. We're done. Dead and gone. Just... There's no... Oh, God. I'm so tilted. I'm so tilted. Do I try this again? Do I try this again or do I? My win rate is not big. Let's try it one more time. Bob and Matt assure me that this deck is good. It doesn't feel like it's good. I'm gonna try one more. I'm gonna try one more. They, we've only been dumpstered twice. We've only been dumpstered twice. Nice, Hodrick. Yeah, the big red deck's a guess. Sounds very good. Righteous Black. So one of one of my things, one of my things about this version of this deck is ramp decks tend to have what I like to refer to as ramp deck problems. And when when a deck like this draws its one, twos, and threes on turns one, two, and three, and draws its eternal seekers on turn, you know, five, six, and seven when it has all the resources for it, the deck is obnoxiously powerful. The problem is, a lot of the time, your cards aren't going to line up perfectly like that, and you're going to draw them in the wrong order. I think you would like the aggressive build of this deck, Matty. I think the aggressive build of this deck is something you would like and enjoy. It's uh, it's not a, it's not a ramp deck. It's an aggressive deck. <sighs> yeah, actually, the rock the rock tournaments are a great way to get into it too. So rock for those that are newer to hex the format, where there's no n rares and legendary cards aren't legal, and uh, they have tournaments for rock every Friday and then one other alternating day throughout the week. And the entry fee for the rock tournaments is something like fifteen cents worth of in-game currency. All right, so I'm gonna play this Leprechaun Artist. I'm gonna play this Diamond Ice, put another resource on top of my deck, guaranteed. Rock is today this week, so for November it's on Wednesdays. The, day, the days rotate. I know it's always Friday and the other day rotates, so I don't like to talk about what the other day is if I don't remember. How much would you need for a good collection? The competitive tier one decks in Hex usually range somewhere between 50 and $150, depending on what you are. There's reasonable budget decks for like 20 to 30 bucks. And that's, that's again, that's talking specifically about standard. If you're looking at non-standard, non-standard formats, there's the rock format that like the decks are like two to $5 to build because there's no rares in them. Pomegranate here. All right, I'm gonna play. Do I wanna have my champion power here? I'm gonna guidance here and see what we find in terms of a resource. I want to get to this Eternal Seeker next turn. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and champ power here and then play this resource and then guidance for a non-resource, I think. Oh, you know what? I didn't need to get a resource there because this is gonna make a coin, right? Yeah, Wax Shot's been kind of unimpressive. And one of the important things for people that come in that are that are new to Hex, people just assume that Hex, like all of a lot of the other card games like Eternal and Test Legends and Hearthstone, they use that that free to play model where you have to like dust cards and stuff like that. Hex has a full buy sell trade secondary market, so you can um, you can buy cards for cash. In fact, my banner ad in the corner for Hex, so you'll see Hex Primal is rotating on there. Hex Primal, think of them as like the MTGO traders or the Star City games of. Um, 
of Hex TCG, and you can go there, fill a shopping cart, and uh, check out. Man, this this Eternal Seeker is not is not awkward at all. It's not awkward at all that I'm gonna void void my own wax righteous wax. Actually, I'm gonna attack first with this. Because if they block this with with two candles, I might just get rid of the Scion. All right, yeah, I'm gonna play this and get rid of their candles, which unfortunately gets rid of my wax shot as well. Is there a typo? What's the buy any card, equip, merc? Sell. Oh, it, it does say sell you cards for money, doesn't it? To be sell your cards. That's funny. No one's ever pointed that out before. It's been up there a while too. Seeker into Seeker might win this game. So Eternal Seeker is a very powerful card. It's a 5-5 five, five flight for seven. That says choose a number. When this comes into play, void all cards of the chosen number. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hit them for five in the sky here, and then I'm gonna play another seeker and void their ones again. And like have two five five flyers that are lethal. And we shouldn't be able to die. Just dropping in to say hello. Will you spend some time playing with yourself, dear Is it we I asked this last night. Is it against the Twitch terms of service for me to play with myself on stream? I feel like there's something explicitly that says something about that. Did one of you poop? Yeah, you got poop poops? All right, dad's gonna, dad's gonna reserve here real quick and then we're gonna address your poop poops. Feel like I want grasp in this dark matchup and not. Hey, come back here, little poop poop. Yeah, you're getting the, don't you hide from me, little turd. You little turds, you got a little turd in your pants. I smell it. I smell it, there's a turd, you little turd. Yeah, it's fine. The the buy list the buy list in hex is closer currently to what the buy list in paper magic is more like as opposed to what um, the buy list and that is the perfect draw as opposed to what the buy list in MTGO is like. Buy, buy listing to a store directly for a quick sellout is usually about 50% when you're selling back staples. Um, when you're selling to other players, again, just like there's a market, so you can sell it for whatever you can get for it. So if you're selling to other players, usually you can get, you know, 70 to 80%. But again, that takes a little bit of work, so it depends on... The rotation in Hex is way easier to follow. So, Hex, Hex, every even numbered set release, Hex rotates the oldest two sets. So when set eight dropped, which is this latest set, Dead of Winter, sets three and four rotated out of their standard format. When set 10 drops, sets five and six will rotate out. Hex releases a new set every four and a half to five months. So approximately every nine months we get a new set. Um, I have all Durthan's glory in my hand. Plays the gold fuzzer out here. I 
I'm not sure what you mean. How do I update the deck list? Oh, the deck list tool. You go download the card files that I linked you. Did I link them to you? I don't remember actually at this point. Oh. I'm gonna start by attacking with the gold father here. If you look on the, the GitHub repo, you can either just re-download the full repository or you can, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Download just the, the card data files. There's three, there's two card data files <coughs> and one, <coughs> oh, one champion file. Pass the turn here. So again, whenever my opponent plays a card, my gold father's getting larger here. Hopefully, they don't make their candles too large this turn so my old Earthen's glory can clean them up. They're probably gonna start growing them though. Hopefully they stay at three threes. Hopefully they play like runic candescence here. This is perfect. Opponent, opponent might concede to what we're about to do to them next turn. No, Chlorophelia costs two, so it's not strictly better, it's just different. Pomegranate costs three. So I'm gonna go ahead and champ power here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and play this, which makes my guy bigger. So it's important that I play the resources before I glory, because this way my momentum guys get out of range of my glory. Now glory comes down and voids everything with defense three or less, so all of my opponent's board is gonna go away and I'm gonna keep my two giant guys. Deck you for 11. Go. Okay. They're, they're fighting back here. They got some 4-4s. Four they're probably dead though, right? Oh, they're just going to be dead to the Decree of Banishing. Double decree plus plus a lucky coin. Alright, let's end on a high note with this one. 